Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so yeah, to riff on what David was saying, um, when he approached me at first, uh, he said, you know, we'd like you to present at Creative Mornings. And I thought, creative, great. Mornings, OK, we'll do that. Um, and then he said, OK, OK, just uh, stay with me here. We have a present. Uh, we'd like you to present on the theme of ugly. And I thought, you, you know that I'm doing an online dating site. like." God, dang it. <laughs> um, but interestingly enough, of course, then we, you know, creative people start to think about, well, what does that mean to actually talk about that kind of subject? And of course, you can naturally think about things. And so we are going to dive into the theme of what does ugly mean? So good morning, everyone. And thank you for um, coming with me on this journey here. So let's think about what ugly would mean. Well, one of the reasons that I think, uh, as an artist, I was interested in this kind of space of trying to get people to connect meaningfully is that, and, and safely, is because one of the things that is kind of really ugly, and it's a pretty serious thing to start about, is actually the idea and the facts of assault and sexual violence against women. And this was just announced from the CDC just recently. Uh, which is to say 19, 3, 19, 3, or almost 20% of women have been raped in the US, and almost 80% of them before she was 25. So that means in this room right now, you know somebody, or there's somebody here who's actually experienced that. Um, almost 50% of women have actually um, experienced some kind of assault. Um, that's insane. Um, and 15% of women have been stalked. And so this is the landscape in 2014 that we're dealing with. Um, when you even talk about violent victimization, it's about five to one men or women to men. Um, on the other side, another sort of like ugly is actually generally the speaking of the lack of women in technology. So when I started as an artist into this startup space, I was like, hey, where are all the ladies in the house? <laughs> um, and when I started talking to people about funding, again, you were like, oh, you know, it's only 15% of women actually are in any kind of, 15% of VCs are actually women. Um, and when they actually think about the kind of companies that they fund, um, there was only, uh, only 2.7% actually have a female CEO at the head of the company, and 4.2% of the VCs that were actually funding them were women. And so the problem with this is, is that as a woman trying to pitch your company to another woman, what happens is that the woman VC has to actually think, you know, just last week I pitched to an another female company, I don't know if I can do it this week. Right? But if you think about any other kind of landscape, it's not like a guy can be like, you know what, I actually pitched a guy company last week. I can't do it this week. So we got to think about something else. And so this is where that gender imbalance really becomes a difficult conversation to start to have meaningfully. Um, in terms of the actual people in technology, in the mid-1980s, we had 37% of the women were actually computer science majors um, in, uh, uh, in their uh, degree program. And for some odd reason, in 2012, it plummeted to 18%. People aren't actually sure why, but that is definitely a trend. Um, and in Silicon Valley, only 12% of the engineers are women. That's kind of ugly. Um, the other thing is that one of the statistics is, is that, strangely enough, even though there's this gender imbalance, more women use and own technology than men. And this has been shown over and over again. So we were thinking, basically, we want to change this. And so I am the CEO of Siren. I'll be one of those 2.7%. And my co-founder and my CEO is Katrina Hess. And we aim to change that and make it a little bit of a, a less ugly situation here. Um, one of the things that we think of that's interesting about ugly and a, an interesting definition is to say, ugly when you start something often means you get dirty, you roll up your sleeves, and you say, I'm going to make mistakes, and I'm OK with that, right? Or I'm going to stumble on something because I don't know how to do it, and that's also OK. So we're totally fine doing that and not afraid. So ugly in that case can actually mean kind of interesting. Um, one of the places that we're actually comfortable with is the idea that there is an uncertainty, the idea of arts, technology, and entrepreneurship. In all of those, uncertainty is actually a really interesting space to be in. So um, making these kinds of mistakes that you don't know exactly what's going to happen around the corner is actually OK. 
Um, and so hopefully my practices as an artist and my understanding of what that is gets translated into the startup world and it works okay. Um, also, in terms of actually online dating, you know what else is ugly? And I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of this here. These kind of quotes that you see on things like OkCupid okay, and Tinder. Um, so, we got this conversation here, and uh, the guy starts out and says, do you have pet insurance? And the woman says, ha ha, uh, I considered it nice icebreaker, do you? And he says, no, I had a turtle, but I got him a new tank, and he died of some sort of infection three weeks later. Seems OK. And then he says, by the way, it's too bad you don't have pet insurance, because your pussy's getting smashed tonight. Thank you. <laughs> um, here's another one. Um, hey, how are you? I'm great, you. Uh, I'm exhausted personally and just had to get rid of every single chair in my house. And she says, why? And then he says, so that when you come over, you have no choice but to sit on my face. What's your number, babe? Um, and then she says, it would be hard to tell you to take a seat and chill since you took all the chairs out of your house. <laughs> <laughs> These are real. Um, <laughs> uh, the guy says, um, you like selfies, eh? Pause. Probably she waited like 10 minutes or so. Um, too bad you don't leak replies. Slut. Um, and here's actually one that was really, uh, there's actually on Huffington Post, and I don't know if you guys saw this, but <laughs> he starts out and he says, uh, you know, you're ignoring me. There's this kind of crazy entitlement. She basically just says in the, in the middle of his ramp, can you stop messaging me? And then he says, you're not even hot and you act like a princess. Um, you work as an account manager. I trade futures contract. I should not be getting this disrespect from you. You're not hot enough to be uh, uh, acting like this. And then she says, hey, Tom, not disrespecting you. I just don't want to talk and we don't know each other, so it shouldn't matter. I hope you have a good night. Um, <laughs> and then he says, that's the point. If you meet on Tinder, you exchange numbers and you get to know each other. You stupid fuck, you're so stupid fuck, you're stupid stupid. Um, if you only knew that I made 32,000 since June, then you'd treat me differently. Um, such fucking nonsense. You guys all think you're the shit no matter how mediocre you're looking and you can't recognize superiority. Um, good morning, creative morning. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, when I uh, talk to my female friends about their experience, and then actually, you know, as a guy, you know, I know a lot of really decent guys, and they're similarly horrified by this. So I thought, you know, this is kind of weird. This is not actually a landscape for uh, civilized flirting and conversation. So I thought, I think I know how to do this better. And as an artist, my job is to will things into existence, and so that's what we did. Um, here's another type of ugly, actually, right? Like, you know, if you've got a little bit of a brain, like, this is sort of interesting as eye candy, but it doesn't actually turn you on, right? Because it's basically like having, a, like, six Doritos, and then 25 Doritos, and then an entire bag of Doritos, and at some point in time, you're like, now I feel kind of sick. I don't actually feel so good. So. When we think of things like attraction and what makes someone attractive, it's actually things like intrigue or having chemistry and being able to talk to somebody and also making someone laugh. So a lot of dating sites out there, <laughs> not so good, actually. <laughs> And if you've ever done online dating, you know why. Because A, you see a lot of this, right? And you also get a lot of these kind of things. So I thought, you know what? There's actually a better way to do this. Um, yeah, right? This one's insane, actually. Um, so what is not ugly? Well, this is what we're going to start and talk about actually what Siren does and hopefully does it differently. And we want to change the world in this way. So our tagline is actually, really, the mission is charm someone's pants off. And the question is, how do you actually charm someone? Well, you do it by, again, starting a conversation, making someone laugh, 
feeling like people can be uh, safe in order to actually be vulnerable. And so one of the challenges that I talk to my team about is to say, how do we make strangers less strange, especially on a digital platform? That's not actually an easy thing to do. So we started from the very beginning, and as designers and creatives, you know this, it's not like we started plugging around on a computer. We actually started from scratch. We went from analog. We started talking to people. We made printouts of things. We used hand paper, you know, hand, uh, pencils and pens to basically take notes and say, what is it that people need when they actually start to want to connect to people? And the interesting thing about online dating is that, you know, if you're not wanting to meet people and date people within your workspace and you're also working 60 to 70 hours, then this is actually a really great opportunity to close that geographical gap and say, how do you as an engineer meet an architect? Or how do you as an artist actually meet a computer programmer? This is where online dating can actually um, be a, a, a benefit. Um, so one of our features that we have on Siren is a question of the day. And they're not questions like, what do you find meaningful in your life? Or, uh, you know, what do you need in a partner? They're just like completely silly icebreaker kind of questions, but they're also ones that reveal a little bit about your personality. And so here is a, a view of actually what the um, women see and then what the men see, because there is an asymmetrical model that we think actually is um, uh, uh, there's an analog in real life, and we'll go over that in a little bit here. Um, here's an example of a question that we had. So it was just, describe your favorite YouTube video or meme, and this is actually a real response from somebody. At 3 a.m., I stumbled upon a German instructional video in, on industrial food slicers. It was set to techno, and it was absolutely insane. <laughs> I saw this response, and you know, I'm the CEO, so I'm not allowed to really intervene, but I was like, oh my god, I totally want to reach out to this guy, right? Like, what? <laughs> um, and another one was, um, what are your favorite smells? And this guy simply said, <laughs> getting out of Texas. <laughs> These are our really awesome men on Siren. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to say is that noticing those harassing messages, we said, well, what we actually need to have for women is for them to be able to control their visibility of their profile. And so we want to be able to have conversations to start, but we want to say the things that make it really complicated for a professional woman to navigate her sexual life is something that we want to actually take out of the equation. So women actually control their visibility by saying, um, if you make me laugh, right, and if you seem like an interesting person, I release my profile to you, and at that point in time, we can start a conversation. Now, as a guy, you can actually see her responses to question of the day, so there is this kind of, hey, there's some really interesting conversation out there, but then if you as a woman are like, ooh, that's my client, or that's my student, or that's my boss, you don't make yourself visible to that person because you don't actually want to have that conversation, which I've actually, when I tested Tinder out, I had these really awkward conversations with even friends and colleagues where they'd say, um, I saw you on Tinder. <laughs> and I thought, now I, I don't know what to say, you know, because <laughs> like, you know the question is, did you swipe left or right, <laughs> right? And you're like, uh oh, I gotta go now. So um, that is a you know it's an un it's a very uncomfortable conversation to have because all of a sudden someone that you're having a good collegial friendly relationship with has now gone into this kind of strange I'm checking you out sexual realm and you you just don't want to have that. So by controlling your visibility, we actually take this out of the equation. And uh, a woman actually asked me um, she's an author and she was saying you know talking about kind of harassing messages online. What is the percentage of harassing messages that you got? on Siren, and I thought, ah, I should check that. And so we went to our data analysis person, and she said, the number of harassing messages is zero. Um, so that was pretty cool. So this is basically how you start the visibility. So as a guy, you get to see all these really smart women, and they're really funny answers, and they're really interesting answers, and you can actually message them if you want to at that point in time, and you can say, that's an awesome answer. Um, when she actually on the sc second screen sees uh, that she kind of thinks you're interesting as well because she sees your profile as these ongoing questions of the day, she releases her profile. You get to see her question of the days and everything else that sort of is like her biography 
and as well as a photo, because we understand that chemistry has to do also with sort of physical attraction. So it's not like we're one of those anonymous chats where you never get to see the other person. So the idea on Siren is that see if you make a connection, see if you can converse with people, and then meet in real life. Um, we also have this feature called a siren call because we were like, you all have your phones with you all the time. It doesn't make any sense that on these sites you start to plan something like two weeks in advance and then someone cancels and someone flakes out. We were like, how about this? So as a woman, you can make a siren call and you can say, hey, I'm up, I'm, I'm down in Pioneer Square. I just had a meeting canceled. Who's up for a drink? And you can send it to all the men in a radius and siren, but you can also send it to the guys that you've been visible and saved in your profiles. And so it's a way to say, hey, I'm also free. Let's meet up. And it's a way to, again, sort of close that gap between the digital and online kind of experience and the real. So real simple steps. Girl makes call. Boy sees call. Boy meets girl. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to show you a little demo of kind of this interaction on Siren. Um, so it's just about a two minute video here. This is also the download screen because as artists, I was like, it's gotta look beautiful. The whole site has to be beautiful. You should use emojis a lot in communicating with people when they're strangers. It actually is a really good thing. <laughs> of the siren call. So it's um, a temporary visibility, meaning that after you sort of get what you want, uh, you shut off the call and your visibility goes back to its regular state. So let's say you made a siren call to everyone, then when you shut off the call, your visibility goes back to um, you know whoever you sort of made yourself visible to originally. And part of that, obviously, is because as a woman, I didn't want to say, you can't ask for other things that you might want, which would also benefit men as well. And those are things like saying, um, it's 11 p.m. and I kind of want to have fun. Um, and not be able to feel like that's not something you can ask for safely. And um, so we've actually had um, people on our, in our community actually ask for anything from, hey, I'm volunteering at this shelter. Who wants to do this with me tomorrow? All the way up to, you know, who feels like getting it on. And we actually thought that's actually a really great spectrum of things. Um, from our community, this is actually some of the feedback that we got. Someone said, Siren is totally awesome. There was just enough information to get a conversation started without the oversharing like other sites. You have a great product. I enjoyed it immensely and met a wonderful woman. Thank you. Um, and then a lot of people have actually said, I've never tried online dating before, but I'm excited to give Siren a try because it's not scary. And the whole idea is you don't 
have to think of it like a job interview or like something where you're putting a lot of this information out for other people to judge. You know, if someone says, what are your favorite smells? You put in just as much information as you want, and that's it. Um, but you do get a sense of people's personality over time. Um, so one of the things that also hopefully isn't ugly is actually our accomplishments. So as creative people and makers, you also know how to work under deadlines, right? Work under that space of, I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to figure it out. So from January 2014 till now, we uh, assembled a team. We actually figured out how to get our first round of funding. We went from an alpha test of the, of the product to a beta test. And so now we're actually in the public space in Seattle. We just actually launched in Portland, so let your Portland friends know that you can play in this playground as well. Um, and we've had about over 100 shout outs in the press. And people in the, people in the business world are like, who does your PR? Oh my god, this is amazing. And I was like, it's just Shay Suzy, actually. Um, <laughs> And the reason for that is actually not because we think of this as another online dating site, but because this is trying to change the way that people interact online. And so even though a lot of the press has said things like, this is a female-centric app and it's feminist, most of my energy is actually spent thinking about, how do you make this a good space for men as well? So I actually want to say it's a humanist dating app because it, most of these other models are neither good for men or women, meaning that if a guy wants to be out there and he's awesome and he's talented and he's interesting, he gets buried along with the other trolls as saying, guys suck. But guys don't suck, right? I like them. Um, you know, a lot of them are my friends as well. So what we are saying is that, you know, as long as women can control their visibility and get a sense of a person, then really we want to also make a, a great space for men to be able to say, this is why you should actually get to know me. Um, so a lot of the press is something like, hey, here's one of the hottest dating apps out there. And if you could design the ideal dating app, what it would look like, um, enter Siren. And it's meeting the unmet needs of many online daters, creating a buzz, da 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 da, da. So we, um, we were on the front page of the Seattle Times recently. It was um, Siren and Ebola. <laughs> you know, that was great. Um, uh, we were in The Guardian talking about how to counter things like pickup artists. We were just actually on the front page of the UW Daily to say, hey, ladies and gentlemen, here's a way for younger people to actually think about meaningfully connecting. Um, GeekWire also did a really great shout out to us. Um, and The Stranger did a really interesting online profile about uh, you know, how artists can actually enter this space. Um, so one of the most exciting things that we have is that we've been out for about three months, and we've had over like 50,000 messages exchanged between people. And so it's a really active and interesting way for people to connect. And as an artist, I was like, this is kind of feeling like my art project in a way, and that the startup is a vector for me. So to be able to say, this is what the impact can be of an artist in this space, is really exciting. And so what I challenge all of you is to say, you can make a difference that you know things like entrepreneurship is accessible to you because there's a fairly low entry to Barry, and so just jump in and do it. Um, so when we think about, again, this theme of ugly, I thought, you know, one of the most interesting things about ugly is how dirty things can be at some point when you are in the beginnings of things. So, um, you know, our tagline is charming pants off, and it's actually a lot of hard work. Um, you know, there are days when I just think, oh God, I just, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but our community is actually super supportive, and so we actually have this really great momentum on how to actually take those pants off. Um, <laughs> But, you know, when I think about it, I'm like, you know, the number of late nights, the number of, like, anxious conversations, even people who actually say really negative things about Siren, like trollers on the comments, like, all of this becomes this kind of thing where you're like, right, that's why we're trying to make a difference and make it better. So at some point, we were like, this is why we'd rather choose that kind of interesting ugly than being pretty anytime. Um, so. Here's the thing. At this point in time, we are relying on our community to help us out. And so this is my ask, which is, now that you know about Siren, 
We want you to spread the word. We want you to be able to help us out and say, let's make this actually a better space. Let's make the idea that women can actually lead companies and uh, make a difference. Uh, that artists or that other people who are not necessarily business people and tech people can join in the entrepreneurial space and actually make a difference. So. We are, we're right now in the iTunes store, and if you want, you can pull out your phones if you're like, hey, you know what, this seems kind of fun. Um, we're under Siren Socially Evolved, and there's an invite code because it's a way to actually create a, a, a sense of community with people, and the invite code password is uh, uh, creative. So thank you very much, and any questions? Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, how do you approach things like relationships? That's a really good question. Um, so, uh, you know, as an artist, I was a little bit horrified when someone said, oh my god, this isn't actually allowing for LGBT community. And I said, oh my god, did I make a bigoted app? I just so didn't want to do that. Um, but I think that what we wanted to do was redress a particular kind of problem that we saw between men and women. And so what we're actually starting right now is focus groups to say, how do we thoughtfully approach the LGBT community, which I think obviously doesn't have the issues of visibility, non-visibility, as much as maybe there are other um, dynamics that are lacking, for example, in Grindr or in um, Scruff or something like that. Um, as well, what we've actually had is requests for invite codes from places that are not so liberal um, like, for example, Missouri. And so, you know, there was a woman uh, who said, you know, as a lesbian in Missouri, I cannot go out to a bar and feel safe in these places. These are not good places for people to meet. So we rely very heavily on online dating to actually um, facilitate those kind of interactions. So in my mind, I'm actually thinking, you know, we actually need to figure out what makes it safe for them to be able to do this in a way that, um, you know, Seattle, you can just maybe go to a restaurant or a bar and feel pretty safe about doing that, but you can't do it in those places. And so that's where we're starting to wrap our head around and say, um, how do we improve that? So it is coming down the pipeline. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, it seems like a lot of what you're launching this app is risk management and harm reduction for women. Well, I'm curious if you have a vision for a world in which this app would be unregistered. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, ideally, you would not need this kind of thing, right? But ideally, then, you know, those messages about s sitting on someone's face because there's no furniture in the house, uh, that would also not happen either. And, um, you know, I, you know my, my experience on Tinder was pretty mild. I mean, I think I had one like, hey, will you suck my balls? And I was like, is that working for you? I'm just wondering, you know? Um, I was like, okay, but you know, I, I wasn't really on there to, uh, to look for somebody, right? It was kind of this anthropological research, but I thought, let's say this is actually the way that you're trying to meet people, then it's kind of a really unpleasant situation to be in. Um, so I think you're right that there is this kind of risk management that we're trying to navigate, but at the same time, meeting people should actually be fun. And so one of the difficult things about online dating is that kind of really defensive sort of... Um, a reactionary uh, atmosphere that oftentimes happens when you're in there because you know a lot of people are like, I did my online profile and uh, okay, we're gonna see how it goes, you know, and you're just like you're like preparing for battle or something. And the way I wanted to sort of think about it is like saying, okay. Siren should be like one of those parties where you meet really interesting and awesome people. And if there's like a small ass all over here, we just all kind of whisper to each other and we say, we should go to the other room. Let's just leave this person here. Um, what I found is actually the case on a lot of other sites. It felt like it was like you were at a bar and a woman would just sit there at the bar stool and every guy could actually basically just say whatever he wanted to her. So the option to that is to say, well, then as a woman, I would just leave that bar physically. Um, as a man, also, I thought, well, you don't want to be that guy. Most of the guys I know don't want to be that guy that just randomly hits on a woman without having any signal. So one of the things that we want to say on Siren is that when a woman releases her profile to you, it becomes a clear signal that she's interested in you. And so when you think about real life signals, that translation is that, you know, 
Uh, you're all mingling, right? Da, 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 da. And then a woman catches your eye. She smiles at you, right? That's the signal to be like, hey, you can now sort of enter her physical space. That's a really civilized way of starting that conversation. What's less civilized is if you're kind of like, got your headphones on, right? Kind of doing your work. And then there's somebody who's like constantly trying to uh, bug you, right? And so you think, well, neither in that second situation, it's not good for either party. But in the first situation, it's flirting, and flirting can be a lot of fun. So by, clarifi by clarifying those signals, we're hoping that it actually, again, allows women to feel safe to have fun and to be vulnerable, and for men to feel like they're getting those signals to actually start that conversation and approach women in a way that feels more respectful. So, yeah. Uh, we'd love it to be sort of behavior change. I mean, what's, you know, you always think like, oh, we have this idea, and then other people are actually saying this is something that could really change the world in a lot of really positive ways. Um, you know, we were surprised at the number of people who have actually said, uh, I have never tried online dating before, but I'm willing to try this. So that means that it's not necessarily this self-selected market of seasoned online daters, but actually people who are like, this feels good to me, right? This feels like a place, and in fact, <laughs> one guy was like, you know what, I, I, I just have fun answering the questions of the day, so it's really awesome if I actually, uh, if, I, if I get to meet somebody, but like, I'm getting to know myself pretty well just by answering these questions. <laughs> so I thought, oh, that's great. Um, and you know, they, they are, they, you know, we think about our questions really seriously, and we think about things like, well, you know, today's question is, who are two people you could collaborate with, right? That says something about your values, about who you're interested in, what spaces you're interested in. But two days ago, our question was, but seriously, how many eggs could you eat in one sitting? <laughs> But that was actually also really fun, too. So we try to think about these ways of saying, you know, if you were to have an interesting conversation with somebody, it's not going to be because you were like, let me tell you all about the last 10 years of my life. It is like that one intriguing thing where you're like, did you just say what I thought you said? Because that was interesting. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? So I feel like what we're trying to do is to say, let's take the best of social media, which is this dynamic, you know, updated content. It's like interesting and fun with the idea that you can meet somebody by having it uh, re uh, kind of condensed into an intimate interaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, you know, uh, again, one of the interesting things about uh, the journalism, uh, the, the, the press that we've gotten is the number of people that said, oh, you're the anti-creep um, app. And I thought, the word creep rarely actually comes into the conversations that we have with team members because we don't want to bring attention to them. And so because there's this visibility control for women, when a guy says something that's really just totally inappropriate, he gets no reward from that, right? There's no women out there who make themselves visible. So you're just like, um, we just don't need to deal with that guy. I mean, there's other things in, um, in, in place basically as a format, which is every app that has social um, content, you can block that person's content. You can flag that and report it to us actually. You know, and there's places where it's like, it could be a little risque and that's okay, right? Because there's this idea of personal taste and so that's okay. But when it's something that really is offensive, then we can do things on our side to say, hey, just want to give you a warning or you know, block the person. Um, Currently, we just had, we've had very, very few, because our community is really respectful and awesome, but we've had one or two people that were like, yeah, that's really bad. Um, so what we do is we deactivate their account by changing their zip code and banish them to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that, but all of a sudden they get on siren and there's nobody around, actually. <laughs> And it's a really remote zip code in Alaska. <laughs> yeah. It's just, 
too much fun to do this startup stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> of it actually is a uh, translation of, um, so, you know, as an artist, you think, well, I know how to problem solve on kind of a one-to-one -one level, but I don't know a lot about um, formalization of strategies. So when we got a lot of demand for Siren, um, we got overwhelmed, actually, with a number of invite code requests. And so I was up until 2 in the morning trying to process these things. You should never do anything in the public space at 2 in the morning. That's a really, really bad idea. And so one of the early mistakes that I made was actually trying to contact all these people. And I think it was like maybe 20 or 30. And instead of putting them on the BCC line, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, when that email went out, I really was like, oh my God, oh my God, right? And like trying to unplug the computer. And I was horrified because, of course, one of our premises was this idea of privacy. And all of a sudden, like, I had put all of these emails on a list. And the next morning, I was like, oh my God. So what it was was a wake up call. And luckily, actually, people were like, hey, just want to let you know, this might have not been a most good strategy to do. And we're like, oh my God, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, but it actually made us do a wake-up call about how do we actually do this kind of um, process. And so that was one of the things. So a lot of the mistakes that I've made oftentimes has to do with process and saying, this process isn't working, how do we change this? Um, another one was, for example, figuring out my role as the CEO on this site because um, we had it so that, you know, I actually didn't call myself a CEO on the site. I said I was an artist. So when I was actually making myself visible to all the men to actually say, I am a conduit for you to be able to ask questions about the site and to know that there are real people on there, um, it was confusing to guys because they would actually ask questions like, are you also dating on the site? And so it made it uncomfortable not only for the men because they were like, I just don't know. And for me to say, oh, I'm sorry, but actually our policy is that we don't obviously engage because A, I know all your information, that's not cool. So, um, so we clarified that part of it. So we made sure that you know anybody who was a team member was very clearly saying, this is who we are and this is our function on this site. Because we never wanted it to be that someone felt like they were on Siren as a test case, right? Or as somebody who was like, we were gleaning information from and coming back to the team and go, did you know what so-and-so said? Like, we never wanted to have that kind of experience. And so we tightened that up a little bit. Um, there were other experiences where, uh, you know, like, I would say something to somebody and you know, my Katrina, my COO would be like, HR violation, you're not allowed to say that kind of thing. And so I would be like, oh, okay, next time. Um, so you know, all, all those kinds of mistakes I think are made, but there's also even funding mistakes and financial mistakes and trying to vet developers and saying, what kind of experience do we need? And you know, one of the hardest things I had to do, and some of you guys may have to do this too, which is um, how do you let someone go out of your team like, that was incredibly difficult. And as an artist, I'm like, we never let go of anybody because anyone who's willing to collaborate with us on a project, we're just like, thank God, you know? And so to be able to say we can't do that in an uh, in a, in a actual company formation, that was really hard in figuring that out. So yeah, there's, there's a bunch. In fact, I would say the only way we got here is by figuring out all our mistakes and then just trying to make smaller ones or recover slightly faster. So yeah. Yeah, David. Oh, see, so you're talking to an artist here. Ah, revenue. Uh, no, um, it is. So uh, one of the things talking about scaling and you know how do we get this out is you know one our get, our goal is probably within the next quarter to actually expand to Seattle or to San Francisco, L.A., New York, and we have invite code requests actually from every state in the country, as well as invite code requests from Europe, from Hong Kong, from Australia. So it's out there. Um, but what we want to say is that, um, or as an artist, I actually think about the idea of what's curated and what's um, sort of community-based. And when you experience something like an online dating thing, you don't really want to think that you're shopping for people in kind of this endless Costco manner, right? Because 
that's not really how you even understand what's attractive to you in real life because you just think, oh, but the next one might be more interesting. So I always thought, well, when I do my Tinder thing, right, it's like I sort of thought about how many people I was willing to flip through before I got tired and put it down. And it was somewhere between 30 and 50. So I thought, well, that's about the number of people that probably you want to sort of think about at any given time about making that connection. So what we wanted to do as a revenue model is to say, again, how are we inspired by real life? Well, if you had more time, what would you do? You would probably go to places like Town Hall or you would go to places like Creative Mornings. So what we wanted to have are these docks, because it's siren, right? swinging docks, right? <laughs> so you have these docks that are, um, that are value-based and lifestyle-based. So you can, join as a, you can join as a member of a city for free, and then you can um, um, pay basically a small amount as a membership to say, I want to join the Seattle docks that is, um, you know, we just moved into Seattle for, you know, last year, right? Or uh, there can be a doc that's like, I want someone who's bilingual and knows foreign languages. Or a doc that's like design and art. Um, there can also be absolutely a doc for, um, you know, LGBT community or schools and that kind of stuff. And so what we have are these sub-siren um, communities where the questions of the day are related specifically to those kinds of um, interests. So, you know, one doc that I always thought was interesting is let's say you're a foodie and a lot of people on these other dating sites would be like, well, I'm really into food. And I thought, well, that's not interesting information because you're human, so of course you're going to be <laughs> eating. So the more interesting aspect is what kind of food do you like and why? And that underlying value judgment gets sort of like um, clarified and shaken out by the questions of the day. Because we have had questions on Siren about food, and you get to be like, oh, that dude goes to McDonald's every third day, right? That guy likes to, um, you know, make food, and that's his most important, you know, that's his primary motivation. And then someone else is like, it's all about Zagat's four-star ratings. To me, all of those are foodies. But the one that you resonate with is the one that you're like, oh, but I like food in the same way that you like food. And so that's kind of how we're going to hopefully um, create a clearer experience for people, as well as hopefully, you know, uh, create value that we would actually be able to take revenue from. So coming down the pipeline. Yes. Oh, well, all the investors kind of look for the same thing. And those conversations, to be honest with you, are a little bit boring for me. But, you know, I'm like, eh, OK. Um, I mean, as an artist, I kind of feel like investors are like collectors. They're like, they have the same sort of feeling about them. And you're like, your money is sort of the least interesting part of you. What else can you do for us that's really interesting? And what kind of conversations can we have? In fact, I should just be like, here's my questions of the day for you, investor. Um, make me laugh. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, they want the same thing. So they're like, well, you know, how many people do you have on the site? What's the growth? And they always talk about this hockey stick model. And I'm like, ugh, OK, whatever. Um, and then they talk about how you're going to make money. And I was like, I get that and all that kind of stuff. So it's, I mean, it's a business thing. Then you t and it's fine. Like, I get that. Like, you know, we, we need to think about that. But I also think, well, you first just need to have people excited about this. And when you have people excited about this, then people will tell each other, like, hey, did you know about this site? And if you get that, then all of a sudden, you will get people who are investors who will say, oh, whatever you guys are doing, we want, we want to be a part of this. Um, I have had, as a woman, an invest, you know, a couple investors who are basically like, we don't invest in female-run companies because we don't think you have the chops for it. So then I spin it and I think, yeah, but as an artist, I've been doing this for 10 years and I'm still doing it. So if you want someone who basically is always faced with failure and um, like <laughs> self-doubt and anxiety and still is okay and shows up the next day and opts into this, that would be me. So ignore the female part if you've got a problem with that. Focus on the fact that as an artist, um, you know, I choose to do this thing. So yeah, yeah. Hockey stick, just, just keep mentioning hockey stick. Uh, and be like, this is where we are on the hockey stick. So, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's probably like investors in here. <laughs> uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah.
Oh, how do you hack it? How did you do that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so one of the things that's actually really challenging is that when you start a conversation with people, uh, it's online, right? And so you can't use a lot of signals of like uh, body language, right, or tone of the voice, which means that um, things are. And you you know this even from your friends and texting and like um, Key and Pool even has like a really funny satire about this, where you know you can have an online conversation and suddenly like someone's offended because someone said something and you don't quite know why. They interpreted this way. So, um, what we actually wanted to say is, you start out with light banter, and then from there, you want to just say, "Can I actually have a conversation with you in that sort of light kind of uh, cocktail party sort of way?" And then from there, somebody will say, "Hey, you seem kind of interesting. Let's meet for coffee." And at that point in time, I think a lot of the complexity that you're talking about, you can have much more safely um, without being misunderstood. So one of the great things that works on Siren, like Gangbusters, is actually this dynamic: woman makes herself visible. The guy looks at her question of the day history. He doesn't just say, hey, you're hot. He actually goes, oh, I noticed that you just saw the latest Star Trek movie. That's awesome. Da -da 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 -da. What did you think? Um, she responds to that because you're like, oh, you actually paid attention to something that I said. And then from there, um, it's just one or two times before, again, she's already made a signal that she's interested. So at some point, he just had to say, hey, you seem really awesome. Do you want to grab a drink or do you want to grab coffee? And that happens over and over again on the site. And it's a very short amount of time that you're doing this banter. And plus, actually, our platform's a little bit buggy. So our messaging app tends to crash. Which means we actually sadly had people on the site go, hey, the app is crashing. Here's my phone number. Let's actually just jump on a, on a more stable. I was like, oh, God. But, um, but basically, it collapses into that dynamic of people saying, let's meet, right? Like, that's the whole point of this. So, um, so basically, from there, that's when you can do a lot of those other things. And so the only reason that I sort of mention emojis is that um, they're just kind of silly and funny. And it's hard to um, misinterpret those because it's just the picture of a little animal, right? Or you just use a lot of like, thumbs up! Um, and so you, you, know, you do these in order to kind of facilitate that idea that you're like, I like to have fun conversations, and I like to engage in that kind of you know, um, light social discovery, and then go from there. So yeah. Yep, one more question? Yes, last question. <gasps> That's a great question, actually. So most dating sites, I think the ratio is about 85% um, uh, men to 15% women. On Siren, we've always been between 55% women and 45% men to 60% women and 40% men. So we have an amazingly great ratio. And we've actually never targeted or marketed specifically to one group or another. Um, and I would actually really say that, again, the men on Siren are really great guys. Um, and so a lot of the women are saying, I meet really nice people on Siren, even if maybe you know the chemistry is not always there in terms of sexual chemistry, but they're like, I'm meeting really nice people. So um, we hope that we always maintain that kind of ratio, even as we scale out. So thank you very much.